In this video, I want to briefly walk you through the bank feeds or processing the downloaded banking in QuickBooks Online. I'm using Craig's Design and Landscape Service, the sample QuickBooks company file. Um, it's a, a good example because anybody can hop in and start using it. You can kind of see what's going on. It also resets every time I close the browser. So any of the changes that I make will be unavailable once I close the browser and reopen it. So I'm going to start by clicking on um, checking over here on the right hand side. Right now I've selected the checking account and I know I've selected it because the tile is blue and because the word up here says checking. If I click on savings, the tile for checking turns gray and savings turns blue and the word up here turns to savings. The same thing for MasterCard. So for each of the accounts that you've connected to your bank, there'll be a tile. If you have a lot of accounts connected to your bank, your tiles will extend and then you'll have back and um, like left and right arrows. So the tiles don't get smaller to the point that you can't read them. You just have left and right arrows so you can spin them. I'm going to start with the checking account as the example. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of walk you through what I see. So I've got my checking. The pencil means that I can rename it or edit my sign-in info. So edit account info lets me rename. So maybe I have two checking accounts and I want to just put the last couple digits for this account. I can do that. So now I know this is checking one, two, three. If, for example, the other checking was different, uh, maybe you have operating and tax savings or maybe you have operating checking and payroll checking, whatever the case is. Okay, so down here I've got my, my three tabs. I have four review. I have reviewed and I have excluded. So the for review tab is where, what I like to describe as the inbox. I have 25 things in my for review tab. So I have 25 things that are in QuickBooks, but they're not really in QuickBooks. They're in a section that's called non-posting. Really what this is, is just your inbox. It, it means you have some stuff here that you have to process and deal with. And then once you've dealt with them and you've added them over on the right hand side, it says add. Once you've added them, they'll then be in your register. And once they're in your register, you're going to see them show up on your financial reports. When they're here, they're not on your financial reports. So once you inch down a little bit further, you have these two tabs. You have all parentheses 25 and you have recognize parentheses 14. The 25 is the same 25 that you see up here. What that means is they have 25 things in your inbox. And then 14 of them is where QuickBooks says, I think I might possibly know what you want to do with these things, but I'm still not going to do it until you talk to me about it. So we'll kind of run through what we've got. Um, I'm going to start with the recognized 14. So 14 of my 25 things are things that I might already know what to do with or that QuickBooks might know what to do with. And it's giving me suggestions. These suggestions are sometimes really good and sometimes not so good. So the first thing I'm going to do is just walk through what I've got. When it says one record found in this kind of green bar, that means that QuickBooks has found a record that you previously entered. It says, hey, this thing's already in QuickBooks. Can I match the downloaded data with what you've already done? So in this case, 868 was received, right? 868 deposited into my checking account. The deposit happened on 518. That's the information that came from my bank. Now it's saying, um, QuickBooks is like, hey, you know what? I found this record. I found that you previously recorded a deposit into your register on 518 for the exact same dollar amount. And then QuickBooks says, can I match these two? So your options are yes, match them, also known as link them, or you can say no, that's totally different. Please add a new transaction. If you add a new transaction, that's going to add it, you know, a new line in your register. That's okay as long as it is a new transaction, but if it is, if it should be linked or matched, adding a new one will make it difficult for you to reconcile because you'll have too much stuff in your register. So I'm just going to click on match. I'm going to do the same thing for each of these. I don't need to click on it to expand it. I can just leave it like this and I can look with my eyeballs. So the spent column, this is the information from the bank. The date column, that's the information from the bank. The description is the information from the bank. The payee is the information that's in QuickBooks. So like the bank says PGE, but QuickBooks says PG and E. 
So I'm just taking a look and I'm saying, all right, does the description of the payee make sense? Does the date over here, which is the date from the data in QuickBooks, does that make sense when I look at the date that the transaction happened? And that makes sense. The dollar amount is always going to match. If the dollar amount doesn't match, QuickBooks won't suggest that you link the two things. So I click on match. This example is a really good example where things don't quite make sense to me. So what I can see is that the downloaded description says books by Bessie. I can see it's $75 and I can see that the download date is 516. Now QuickBooks is saying, hey, you know what? I think this matches with the transaction that's already in QuickBooks. And it's trying to match um, a transaction that's dated 518, but to Pam. So I'm not terribly worried about the dates. They're close enough um, that I could have had a typo when I typed in 518. It could have really been 516. The transaction that I've entered into QuickBooks, um, expense 76, I said this was money that I gave to Pam, but QuickBooks is, is trying to suggest or offering me the chance to link the money I gave to Pam with the company Books by Bessie. And I don't think those are the same people. I think those are two different people. In your real company, in your real QuickBooks, you're going to know if Pam works for Books by Bessie and if they're the same. But in this sample, I'm going to assume that they're two different things where people just got the same money. That happens once in a while, so it's important to know what to do. And it's also important to know you can't just willy-nilly rely on these to be accurate. So I'm going to click on the word add, and then it, the payee, who got the money? Well, the question for who got the money is down here in the memo. So the memo is going to be the information that shows up on online banking. So it says Books by Bessie, that's the payee, that's great. Why did Books by Bessie get money? Books by Bessie definitely did not get money for uncategorized expense. Um, that seems kind of silly. So I'm going to click this drop down, which is my chart of accounts, and I'm just going to pick the reason they got money. So in this example, I'm assuming that Books by Bessie is probably the bookkeeper. So I'm picking bookkeeper. You'll know why you gave someone money. So I'm going to skip over the billable and the customer. The memo, it says Books by Bessie. I don't have anything else I want to add to the memo. So I feel good about that. I'm going to click on Add. So now we're going to jump ahead and we're going to say, OK, we reviewed all these things. There's 12 of them. Everything is good. There's nothing that needs to be corrected. We can slowly click match and wait for it to match, or we can do it all at once. I'm going to do it all at once. I'm going to click the select all button to the left of the word date. I'm going to click on batch actions, and then I'm going to select the option for accept selected. Let's say, please take those 11 things and put them in my register. So when we started, we had a, a, you know 20 something things in our inbox. Now we're down to 11. Feeling pretty good about this. So I have 11 things, I have zero left in my recognized, no problem, let me start working on that stuff. So I'm gonna start at the top. I have money received, so it says received um, from Books by Bessie. And, and QuickBooks is helpfully suggesting uncategorized income. I don't think it's uncategorized income. I know from just a few minutes ago that I said, when I give Books by Bessie money, it's because this is my bookkeeper. I'm going to assume that if my bookkeeper gave me money back, um, that they didn't buy something from me, rather they were just giving back money. So instead of being uncategorized income, I'm gonna type in bookkeeper. You'll know why people are giving you money. If you got a refund on something, I would recommend that you undo the expense. So when you paid for it in the first place, which category did you pick? And then when they give you the money back, pick the same category to undo some of the money that you paid. So when you look at the profit and loss and you look at your expenses, you can see how much money you really spent in that category. So like Books by Bessie, I want to say, okay, I spent this money, but I got a partial refund. So this total, that's how much money I really spent. I'm going to click on Add. A couple other things have come up. Um, for PM, for example, it says two records found in $75. I'm gonna click on it and see what my two records are. So QuickBooks is saying, okay, there's two records in QuickBooks, both of them for $75, both of them are on the same date. Which record should I link with this downloaded transaction? Well, this is where you come in and you say, all right, I'm, I'm a pretty logical person, I got this. Um, the bank detail says the money went to PAM. 
I look at the two things that I previously entered in my QuickBooks. I entered one expense for Pam and one bill payment for Books by Bessie. Well, I want to link this to the expense um, for Pam. So I'm going to click the circle for that, and then I'm going to choose Match. When I look at Squeaky Clean Car Wash, I can see two transactions. I can see one dated 516 and one dated 59. So they're both Squeaky Clean Car Wash. They're both the same dollar amount, and they're pretty close in date. I'm going to pick the top one because 516 is the same as 516 here. If, for example, I had entered this as 515 or 514, I would still pick that. I would still say it's probably the same thing. I wouldn't want to add extra to my register. I would just say, yep, that's, that's good. We'll click on match. So let's have an example where I don't know what to do. Chin's gas, $185. Over here it says vendor payee, parenthesis optional. Um, in Rachel land, this is an optional, so I'm going to go ahead and type in Chin's gas. So Chin's gas and oil. And then the reason it says uncategorized expense, I don't really like uncategorized because I, I feel like if you're going to go through the effort of doing your bookkeeping and, and having records and having something you can go back and look at and make business decisions with, it doesn't make sense to pick uncategorized. Um, so I'm just going to make an account called ask for help. Or you can call, you know, you can call it um, look this up or whatever makes sense to you, right? I, I like to pick some fun names. That way it, it doesn't feel so overwhelming. Uh, people don't like accounting as much as I do. So when I work with people, I'm like, yeah, let's pick a fun name. So I'm going to click on add, look this up. And it's an expense. I'm going to change it to say other expense. The reason I do that is that I want it to stick out like a little sore thumb. I want you to know that's, that's a thing you need to work on and figure out. So then I click save and close. So I've now added look this up to my chart of accounts. I know that it's a thing I need to process later, but for now I can at least get it in my register. So my register is going to have all my information and that's good because it means that I know that my bank balance, my register balance is correct. It's more important to me right now to, ha to know how much money I have in the bank and that I can go back and fix any categorization errors. So sometimes we get to a case where we need to add the vendor to the, to the list. So in this case, we paid A1 rental. Um, we can see it's A1 rental right here. We paid them $1,200. So for vendor payee, I type in A1 rental and it doesn't appear. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add. I'm not gonna add any details because I don't need to or want to. I'm just gonna click on save. So I'm saying, hey QuickBooks, please add A1 rental to the list of vendors or people I've given money to. And then why did I give them money? I gave a, I gave A1 rental money um, apparently for backhoe rental. So I'm pretty impressed with myself. I didn't know I could drive a backhoe. I'm gonna go ahead and click on add. So same thing here, A1 rental. I probably rented equipment again. So I'm just gonna pick equipment rental and click on add. So here I've got $200 and it's a backhoe deposit. We know from a few minutes ago that if we gave someone money and they gave us back money, that we're not going to call it income. We're going to undo the expense. Um, so let me type in equipment rental real quick. And then I click on add. So what's happened here is the checking account number 123 has a bank balance of negative $3,600 and has a QuickBooks balance of negative $1,500. Aside from the fact that both of those numbers are horrible numbers, what I know is that these two numbers don't match. So I'm going to walk you through what the numbers mean. The bank balance, the top number as I describe it, is the number that you would see when you log into online banking. Um, this sample company file has a much nicer bank than I do. I do not think my bank would let me go $3,600 in the negative, and I certainly don't plan to try and find out. But if I logged into online banking, I would see my balance is negative $3,600. When you look in QuickBooks, when I look at the QuickBooks register, it's telling me that I have $1,500 in the negative. So the $2,000 could be that maybe I've deposited money. Um, like in my QuickBooks, I have received money and I have recorded the deposit, but the bank hasn't received the money yet. So maybe I, I did my work at my desk and I just haven't gone to the bank yet to deposit it. Or maybe I did mobile banking and it takes a day to show up. If you can't explain the difference between what I described the top number and the bottom number, that means you need to investigate and see what's going on. 
more often than not, it's a problem between the chair and the keyboard. Um, you made some sort of small operator error. You don't want to have a difference here unless you can explain it. So I can explain some differences, um, such as mobile deposit takes a data deposit. The checks are on my desk and I'm going to go take them to the bank to get deposited. I wrote paper checks and the paper check hasn't cleared yet. There's a whole variety of reasons that your online banking may not match your running register, but it's important that you at least know like, hey, these should generally match. And if they don't match, I should be able to explain why. Um, I don't ever need to know your explanation of why. I just want to kind of get you in the habit of saying, okay, if these numbers don't match um, and if I can't explain why, that means my records aren't good and I need to figure out why they're not good so that I can make them good again. If you're not sure what's in your register, you can always come over here and click on go to register. This brings up your register. So I've got the newest on the top and the oldest underneath. So I can see what's going on. On 7-13, one month from now, I wrote a check to Books by Bessie. Or one month from now, they gave me a refund of $55. And I deposited that refund into the account called Bookkeeper. And then my running balance is on the right-hand side.